welcome once again to our show that is called Real Shame. It's a show where we review movies from our movie list of shame or movie blind spots. I'm Adam. I'm Andy. Early in the week, we talked about a war, anti-war movie that was directed by Stanley Kubrick called Paths of Glory. And we wanted to follow this up with another movie that we've been hitting at, whether knowingly or unknowingly, for quite some time. And that movie is called... Breaker Morant. Breaker Morant. During the Boer War in South Africa, three soldiers are put on trial. Once again, I feel like I'm reading <laughs> Monday's uh, synopsis. Three soldiers are put on trial for murdering six Boer commandos as well as a German priest. It's up to their inexperienced defense lawyer to try and save the men from the firing squad once again in Breaker Morant. They gave you the report on the preliminary inquiry? Yesterday. Yesterday. But the trial starts tomorrow. Yeah, we thought you were going to miss it. Well, you don't know anything about us. Only what's in the preliminary report. And that, gentlemen, is not very flattering. As a matter of interest, how many courts martial have you done? None. None? Jesus, they're playing with a double-headed penny, aren't they? Would you rather conduct your own defense? But you have handled a lot of court cases back home, sir. No. As a country town solicitor, I handled land conveyancing and wills. Wills might come in handy. I'm going to need a lot of information. Do, do you think they're going to imprison us or cashier us, sir? My father, if he found Haven't out. They told you. There are several murder charges. The penalty is death. Breaker Morant was directed by a guy named Bruce Beresford. Uh, he had a, a, this movie wasn't a like a giant international hit at the time, but it did get a lot of critical acclaim. Uh, after this, he went on to do movies in America. Start I think starting with Tender Mercies. Uh, with Robert Duvall, uh, and he ended up doing... He, he's done you know, a lot of well-known stuff, but uh, one of the most well-known movies he's done is the Best Picture winner of 1989, which was Driving Miss Daisy, although he was not nominated for Best Director that year, but it did win Best Picture. Uh, it stars Brian Brown, who you might know from, well, a lot of movies, but you might know from Cocktail with yeah. Tom Cruise or FX. And he's not Jason Isaacs. He's not Jason Isaacs. Uh, <laughs> he plays Peter Hancock, one of the soldiers that's put on trial. Uh, Louis Fitzgerald plays George Witten. He's another one of the, he's the youngest soldier that's put on trial. And Edward Woodward is the final soldier put on trial. He is Harry Breaker Morant because he is a breaker of horses. Now, Edward Woodward is well known to people. Well, if you're British, well, you don't have to be British, but uh, he was in a British television show back in the 60s, 70s, something like that. He played David Callan Ka Ka in a TV show called Callan, or Callan, I'm probably saying it wrong. But I know him because I'm a child of the 80s as Robert McCall in the original television show of The Equalizer. Yes, long before Denzel Washington did two Equalizer movies and before they rebooted the television series with Queen Latifah. Oh, she plays Robin McCall. Uh, she's the new Equalizer. Uh, but Edward Woodward did it first. He was Robert McCall in the original Equalizer. Ran for a few seasons back in the uh, mid to late 1980s. I loved that show when I was a kid. And he's also in the original and far superior The Wicker Man Jeez. movie from the 1970s. Not the terrible Neil LeBute oh. remake with uh, Nicolas Cage. The original... And best uh, film from the 70s uh, with uh, Christopher Lee as well. That's a very haunting and eerie and uh, crazy, crazy movie. Maybe we should do that for our Halloween stuff. I think we should. It's, it's, it's a good one. Uh, and then finally, their defense lawyer is played by Jack Thompson. He plays Major Thompson. I hope I wrote that down right. I believe he plays Major Thompson. Uh, <laughs> Not a far I don't, I don't think I just yeah I don't think, I don't think I just took his last name. But uh, it's based on a 1978 play, also called Breaker Morant, by a guy named Kenneth Ross. Uh, and just to set the stage, so the Boer War is actually the second Boer War. The first Boer War was in like the 1880s, uh, but this second Boer War is typically what is known as the just the Boer War. Uh, it's called that. It lasted from 1899 to 1902, and it was fought between the British Empire and Boer settlers, who are basically Dutch settlers. 
Uh, boer actually means, but boer, B-O-E-R, is the Dutch word for farmer. Hmm. Uh, so boer, bauer in German, farmer also. Um, and it ended in 1902 with the Treaty of Vereniging, if I said that correctly. And incidentally, I wrote this down. Uh, Gandhi lived in South Africa at that time. And oh. he was uh, actually basically an ambulance driver, stretcher carrier in, during the Boer War. So we would have seen uh, Sir Ben Kingsley running around. You might have in the background. <laughs> you, you, might, you might have. He was, he was running around with, with a stretcher. Uh, but yeah, all right. Uh, so it takes place in South Africa, of course, because that's where the Boer War was fought. But it was filmed entirely in Australia. Uh, this is a movie that I've seen again because I mentioned it on the show. I've seen it a few times, but you've never seen it. I have not. And so, what did you think of this particular? I know you like Paths of Glory. What did you think of this particular? Because this, I, I would classify this also as kind of an anti-war movie. Yeah. What did you think of this one? Uh, this one's another winner for me. I really like this one. Good deal. Uh, you can probably rinse and repeat all the stuff I said from Paths of Glory <laughs> in this movie. Because this is like, it has the same themes of Paths of Glory. It obviously has the same, um, it sounds like it has the same kind of storyline, structure, plot. Hmm. But there's a little bit of like Rashomon thrown in a little bit. Because, yeah. you know, the whole time Breaker's totally. not 100% sure if he's getting the full story from this. And it seems like the story is kind of ever evolving depending on yeah. who's telling it or how much details have come forward and stuff like that. So I found that very interesting. I really, the for me, the 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 um, courtroom stuff really stood out for this one. Um, just the way it shot. And it like, did a lot of close-ups in the courtroom mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It just it felt very, very good. Uh, again, very timely, very prescient, prescient uh, you know, of all that kind of stuff with everything that's going on. And I really... Really, really like this movie. Um, it took me a while to place, um, was it Brian Brown? Yeah. Because I was. You thought he was Jason Isaacs. I, well, he looked a lot like Jason Isaacs. I was smart enough He's, to know that Lucius he was. Lucius Malfoy. Yeah. I was like, I was like, ah, Lucius Malfoy would have been really young for this movie. Yeah. But uh, as soon as I was like, ah, oh, Cocktail and Dreams, I was like, I know who this guy is. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, no, this movie was, this movie is also very, very good. Yeah, it, I mean, it differs from Paths of Glory in the sense that Paths of Glory, the first kind of section of it is war, and then the, the last part of it, or, or the next part of it, is the, the trial. And then, of course, the final part of it is when they're put in front of the firing squad. This movie is basically just the yeah. trial with a lot of kind of flashbacks and, and kind of stuff in between the trial when you have the guys that are talking about their defense strategies or, they're, you know, he's talking to the prisoners about what he's going to do or the prisoners talking about whatever. But it's this is definitely more of a... Uh, a, a courtroom kind of drama. Yeah. Uh, but again, we like those sorts of things typically, except uh, for Find Me Guilty. <laughs> i got to mention how terrible that is again. But no, uh, yeah, this is a great film. Uh, I think uh, everybody's really good in it. I, I, I love, once again, it, it, it does remind me a lot of Paths of Glory. Again, that's, what, you know, that's why I paired it uh, with this film. But because their defense lawyer, again, tries to introduce evidence, tries to get witnesses, tries to, and he's, he seems to be thwarted at every turn because uh, they just want these guys to be found guilty and just be done with it. And I also like that in this one, and this is like, is this based on a true story? Is this kind yeah, of... Yeah, no, it's based on a true story. I like and There also, was actually six defendants in the in okay. real life, but there's only three in the play and in the movie. And I like yeah. on this one how, like, he's not a lawyer, right? So in Paz of Glory, he was a, like, defense attorney or whatever, did legal stuff in this one. He's a horsebreaker, right? Is that... No, no, no. The, 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 their lawyer is an actual lawyer, but he's... Uh, the horsebreaker is Harry. Breaker Murray. Okay, yeah, yeah. The, the, the guy's an actual yeah, lawyer, but but he has but he has very little... He has no experience defending guys from the death okay, penalty, okay, okay. basically. Because uh, I, I, I forget what he, what kind of law he says he practices that has nothing to okay, do. And okay. so they're like, oh, great, we're screwed. Well, I was mistaken on that. Yeah. Uh, well, and, well, and in Paths of Glory, another kind of difference is in Paths of Glory, those guys are picked at random, except, yeah. you know, maybe the Ralph Meeker character. Uh, in this, I mean, they're guilty. I mean, they, they killed... Maybe, so, again, I guess we can kind of back up. And the plot, they do kill the uh, Boer commandos, the six Boer commandos. And Brian Brown does kill the German priest. Yeah. He lies about it and says that he didn't. But he did because, you know, they were basically kind of trying to silence him. Uh, but they they are avenging well, they also Captain Hunt do, because of orders. They are told yeah. to avenge Captain Hunt, who was killed and mutilated by some of the Boer commandos. So was it Brian Brown? Was Because he also thought, like, the... The priest was a spy, right? 
Or yeah. was he just saying kind that? Kind of. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. He thinks, right. He was kind of spreading like he, he words. Told, he, uh, Breaker Morant told the priest not to talk to the prisoners, and he does talk to the yeah. prisoners. And he's like, you know, he, he might have told them something. You know, they might have given him sensitive information. So Brian Brown yeah. basically tracks him down and, and kills him. Although Brian Brown... <laughs> Spent the rest of his afternoon with two lovely ladies. Uh, yeah, you know, two, he did. two married women. He went from one place to another. He did, like, man. He gets busy. around. He yeah, gets around. I think, I think it's like a little, again, like you said, it's a little bit different. Whereas like Paths of Glories, these guys are kind of like following orders. And it's not whether or not the orders were correct or not, or should you follow them or not. It's more like, you know, what happens when things kind of go astray and who's going to be put on the line. Yeah. With this one is more focused on. Should you follow these orders, whether or not yeah. they're good or bad, you know, morally good or morally bad kind of thing. So I think those are the, the you know, where they kind of fall a little bit on this. Right, right. right. Yeah, it's interesting. We didn't mention it in Paths of Glory, but I, I, it's hilarious to me, or one of the things, I mean, hilarious in a sad way. Uh, Ralph Meeker's character has a noticeable cut on his mm-hmm. head. He was knocked out the entire time, <laughs> yeah. he says. Whenever they were advancing on it, and they're like, you know, he was like, because a guy fell on him yeah. and he's knocked out in the trench. And the guy's like, yeah, well, do you have any witnesses to that? And he's like, no. And he's like, well, that, that wound could have been self inflicted. And, he's, and <laughs> you're just like, come on, man. No, this guy can't win for losing. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I think that's funny. Uh, but no, in, in, in this film, um, these guys are, are guilty. Uh, but again, yes, they're following orders. And they're, I, I'm glad you brought up Rashomon because, yeah, there is a lot of, uh, he said, she said, or maybe not she said, but he said, and he, he also said, said uh, in, in this film. He said, film, they said. Yeah, he, he said, said, they said. Uh, because Captain Hunt, who said, we don't take prisoners, so kill those guys. Yeah. Captain Hunt's now dead. That's who they're trying to avenge. Uh, so there's a lot of like, well, we don't have any written record of that. You know, well, nobody would have said that order and all this kind of stuff. So these guys are kind of screwed from the yeah. beginning. <laughs> well, and then at the end, I guess the the lawyer does so, such a good job uh Two of them get off, right? And one of them. One uh, of them gets just off. The, the youngest one gets uh, penal servitude for life, so he doesn't get the death penalty, but he gets a life sentence, although yeah. there is some text on the screen that says he was released after three years, so he did not serve life. But yeah, Breaker Morant and Peter Hancock were both executed by firing squad at dawn, uh, which is a very beautiful scene It's because it, it takes place as the sun is coming up, although it's a tragic end to their lives. Uh, anything else? No, I know. I really, really liked it. So, just like Paths of Glory, this is in the Criterion Collection as well. So, you can get it on Blu ray or DVD or whatever your medium of choice, media of choice uh, is, not medium. Um, 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, 91% audience score. Interestingly, Siskel gave this thumbs up. Roger Ebert gave this thumbs down. I don't remember his criticism for it, but he. He gave it thumbs down. That's weird. Seems odd. Yeah. Uh, and Leonard Maltin gave it three and a half stars. So Paths of Glory was four stars. This is just slightly down. Three Interesting and a half stars. that it has 100% of its critics on Rotten Tomato and Eva gave it a <sighs> thumbs down. You'd think that would make it bring it down to 99%. Uh, and his review may not be on there. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think it's 100%, but I think it only had like 23 crit- gotcha. critical reviews, something like that. Yeah, um, I mean, I think this is another winner. I, like, yeah. again, it's just, it's just, you know... It, it's very timely and it's worth checking out and yeah. seeing all that kind of stuff. If you only know Edward Woodward as the equalizer, you should check this film out. And if you only know Cocktail and Dreams, <laughs> Brian Brown. <laughs> Brian Brown and Cocktail. Yeah. Yes. All right. Your question? Your question. All right. So earlier in the week, we talked about a Stanley Kubrick movie, which was Paths of Glory. Uh, and we decided to, uh, you know, to answer, you know, how we feel about. His filmography, what are our favorite Stanley Kubrick films? Yes. I figured we'll do like we did with the Michael Bay episode of last week or the week before and uh, kind of go down the list of things he's done. I have seen a handful of Stanley Kubrick movies. I haven't seen everything. I'm sure you've seen a lot more than I that. have seen all of the stuff from The Killing onwards. I have not seen his early films, but I hear, you know, obviously they're not, not that great. Like Fear and Desire and Killer's Kiss, I've not seen. But I've seen The Killing, Paths of Glory, and on. So yes, I've seen just about all of them. All right, so where, where do you fall in The Killing? You like it? Uh, I do. It has been a while since I've seen it. That's another one that's in I, it, it, Criterion Collection. Um, it, you know, it, it's good, and, and, and it, it, is, it is, you know, now viewed as a classic. Um, I don't remember enough about it to really comment a lot on it i remember i remember it being good and i remember 
watching it and thinking, okay, it's easy to see why this guy went on to be great. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't remember a whole lot about it. Sorry. And we talked about Paths of Glory on Love it. Yeah. Monday. Love it. Spartacus, I mean, I feel like that this movie was ubiquitous to me growing up. Yeah. Like, they played a lot at school Yeah. Uh, for me. And I, 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 rem- I have a, a couple different versions of it, like Final Cuts and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I, I like I like Spartacus. Yeah, I like Spartacus too. Um, it's long. I mean, it's like three. I was like going to say three it's or four an, hours. It's a, it's a movie. It's kind of like Ben Hur. I, I like Ben Hur a lot, but yeah. you know both of these movies are very long. So I, it's not like I've watched them a whole lot. Yeah. But yeah, Spartacus is is, is definitely a solid film. I am, heard Sp- of, I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. I've heard of Lolita. I have not seen it. There's there's been a remake of Lolita, right? Yeah, the, the at least one in the '90s. There may have been more than that. Uh, the one in the '90s is with uh, Jeremy Irons and Dominique Swain. Yep. Uh, I like Lolita a lot. Uh, it's got uh, James Mason. Is uh, Humbert Humbert? No, yes, Humbert Humbert. And he is. Uh, and Peter Sellers is Claire Quilty. And who plays Lolita? Uh, it said. Um... Sue Lyons. Sue Lyons. That's right. Yeah. L- no, Lolita's good. I like it. I'm not. Uh, Doctor Strange Love. I have seen Doctor Strange Love. I know there's a lot of people that are really crazy for this movie. It's a farce. I feel like it's yeah. a take up on a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of that kind of goes over my head for whatever reason. I, I um, think Doctor Strange Love is in my top three Kubrick films. So it's like what Peter Sellers is the playing t- two roles in it. I think three roles. Three roles in it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hear great things. I need to revisit again. It's one of those things I watched very early on where I was kind of, you know, taking films a little bit more seriously and stuff. Yeah. And I think it's due for a revisit on my my end, right? 2001, A Space Odyssey. Classic. I mean, it's visually stunning. Is the story really there? I'm not sure. Like, I'm a big, (laughs) you know me, I'm a big story guy, so... I, I think it's visually stunning. I just don't know if the story's great. It's good. I don't know. Where do you fall on it? 2001's in my top three as well. Strange Love, 2001, and, and one other one. All right. Is it the, the other one the next one? No. The Clockwork Orange? No. I, I've seen, again, watched this a long time ago, probably like you know 20 years ago when I watched around uh, Dr. Strange Love, and I thought it was interesting. Uh, you know, I've seen like a lot of images from it. Of uh, was it uh, it's uh, of Malcolm McDonald and stuff like that dressed up and you know his get up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Clockwork Orange is uh, one that I had heard heard about for years. Kind of notoriously, uh, how you know violent and 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 whatnot it was. Because I think it, at one point it was like rated X or something. Yeah. Uh, so I'd heard that it was you know really really shocking and whatever. And I think by the time I saw it, I had seen far more shocking films uh, because you know there have been a lot of far more shocking films that have come out since 1971. Um, so I think watching it, I didn't think that it was tame. I mean, I still was disturbed by some of it, uh, you know, cause these guys are, you know, rapists and murderers and whatnot, you know, they go in and, and, and just beat people up and rape people and kill people and stuff. So it's not like it's, it's not shocking. Uh, but I think that I had kind of hyped it up as being like, Oh my gosh, it's going to be difficult to watch. And I, you know, I, it wasn't difficult to watch for me. I, I thought it was okay. I think it's another film like you. I think I think I saw it so long ago. I need to revisit it again because I've only seen it once. And it reminds me of a little bit of what you're saying, like House of a Thousand Corpses when it came out. Uh-huh. Like remember, like the whole lead up to it, it's like this movie's so gory, it's so crazy, it's all that kind of stuff. When you watch the movie, you're like, that eh, really? Yeah, yeah. So that that kind of rung that bell. I don't I don't think the two are that comparable, but you know yeah. what I mean. Uh, Barry Lyndon, have not seen it. The only thing I know about Barry Lyndon is that it was shot with candlelight. Like it, it was very like natural light, natural candle light. light. Um, I have seen Barry Lyndon. I, I've seen it once. I saw it at the Paramount Theater in Austin um, in their like summer series, uh, and I liked it. But it's another it, another film that I probably need to see again. Yeah. Uh, but I did enjoy what I saw back whenever it was. Years so ago. the next one is I, I was going to say this is Kubrick's most famous movie, but I don't know if that's true. Uh, well, it's it's the definitely shiny. one of his most beloved, and especially among horror fans. Yeah, except not us. No, we I'm we we're both <laughs> Doctor Sleep f- like better than The Shining. Yeah, and I, if people are going to be like, "What?" I, I'm sure uh, when they see that. I think The Shining visually is really cool. Yeah. I just don't think it's a great movie. I, I don't. Um, and, and 
I saw it before I read the book. So it's not like I read the book and then saw the movie. Like, the book is way better, although the book is way better. <laughs> um, but I didn't read the book until after I saw the movie for the first time. I, I do think, again, I, I think that there there is an atmosphere to it that is really cool and it is creepy. But I just don't think the movie is is that great. And, and again, that's blasphemy to most people because people think that The Shining is one of the best horror films ever made. And, and you know what? If that is your opinion, there's nothing wrong with that because you're definitely the majority and we're the minority. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of The Shining, but it's watchable to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went to the theater and so I went to the draft house and saw it just because I wanted to see it on the big screen a few years ago. Uh, because again, visually, I think there's a lot of cool, and I love the, uh, at the time it was Walter Carlos, now it's Wendy Carlos score. Uh, it's really cool, uh, bombastic and eerie and, and, and whatnot, but it's just not a movie that we love. Yep, I agree 100%. Just take what I said about 2001 and re- rinse and repeat for The Shining. Again, it's more visually, aesthetically pleasing, and for me, the story just isn't quite there. I do think Dr. Sleep makes The Shining better, uh, just because I, I have such an affinity for that movie. Yeah. Um, I think it just kind of helped. Because I like that movie so much, it helps bring up The Shining a little bit. And I'm not saying The Shining's a bad movie. It's just not my one of... I don't think it's, a, like no, Andy said, as beloved for me yeah. as it is for everything else. Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Get Jacket. Get some! Get some! Where I watched it in high school RTC, ROTC, which probably shouldn't have happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any parents were informed that we were watching uh, Full Metal Jacket, but we did watch it. We did. Surprisingly, they left off the scene where um, where uh, uh, Kingpin kills himself. Really, I'm sure they. You know, that's probably very poignant for it being because I think it's more. I would actually. I think they were giving us in the context of like, yeah, the military is really cool and stuff like that because it was ROTC. But I think it's pretty much an anti-war movie. With yeah, I think all, kind of, all of Kubrick's so. war movies are. Doctor Strange is anti-war. You know, I think all of his movies are. All of his yeah. war movies are anti-war movies. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I so I I probably need to revisit it. It's been, you know, probably thirty years since I've seen it, so yeah. it's been a while. I have seen Full Metal Jacket actually quite a few times, and I saw it at the, again at the Draft House a few years ago. I, I think it's really good, um, but I, I was going to say, well, I guess we can do his final film. I watch yep. it. Yeah, you watched this one recent. Yeah, I watched recently. it at Christmas time because it takes place at Christmas. Although it came out in July, it takes place at Christmas time. I watched it last Christmas. It's something I need to revisit because I remember it being very. I saw it like pretty close to when it came out. Uh, I, I don't think I saw it in theaters. I don't think I was I, I old enough to see I it in theaters. It. I'm old uh, enough to have seen it. I, I rented <laughs> it. Um, probably shouldn't have rented it. Uh, I remember it being very confusing to me, yeah. the whole movie. So it's probably one of those ones I need to revisit now that I. I, I don't think it would be some confusing age. to you now. I don't think it would be. So actually, so we'll choose our favorite. You've met, you've highlighted a couple of your top three. I don't know if it's it's recency bias or not, but honestly, I think Paths of Glory is my favorite thing of his. Uh, well, I was going to say that that rounds out my top three. I, I don't know what order I would put them in, but I would say Dr. Strange of 2001 and Paths of Glory are my top yeah. three Kubrick films. There's a couple I need to revisit, but I, I really like Paths of Glory. I think it's, I think the visuals are there. I think the story's there. Over a movie like The Shining in 2001 for me, so yeah, I need to I need to watch The Killing again. I need to watch Clockwork Orange again. I need to watch Barry Lyndon again and kind of see where I fall on those three. Uh, and again, I like Little Lead. I mean, I, I I basically like them all. I just not I don't like The Shining as much. You know, I, I don't th- I'm not I'm not as big a fan. But the rest of his oeuvre, whatever oeuvre. you want to call it, uh, I, I like. I mean, I, I mean, you know, he he didn't make just a a tremendous amount of films. He was pretty selective. About what he did, and of course, he's it's been over twenty years since he passed away. But well, he was he also a like great body of work, meticulous too. Like yeah, all these right. movies, like took years of him, like yeah, notes and stuff like that. And you can kind of see like different expos ex- and a lot of a lot of takes, a yeah. lot of takes. Whenever you're shooting stuff, you yep. make guys do do stuff forty and fifty yeah. times and or whatever. Dave Fincher's like, I'm gonna one up you, yeah. Stanley Kubrick. And Clint Eastwood's like completely the opposite. Yeah. Clint Eastwood's like one take. Yeah. A guy flubs his line. He's like, that's fine. We'll, we'll just we'll go with that. It. Print it. It's good. It's good. I don't care. We'll, we'll cut good. around it. I'm 97. Yeah. Hurry. I don't, have, do I don't have patience for this. <laughs> we got to do this. Yeah. Okay. The baby won't act up. Just grab a rubber baby. We'll do it with a rubber baby. <laughs> That's our Clint You're Eastwood. an actor. Clint Eastwood yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I think, yeah. I think I give that's it what a, it sounds like. I give it a solid three stars. Make my day. Okay. Uh... That was all of our Kubrick uh, thoughts on Kubrick, I guess. 
Uh, I'm sure you, if you're watching it, you've seen Kubrick movies. You probably feel way different than we do about 2001 and Shining. Uh, probably, I, I like 2001. Me. Yeah, so <laughs> me, you can throw me under the bus. So let us know. Uh, leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. What are your favorite Kubrick movies? What favorite memories you have with Kubrick movies and all that kind of stuff? If you're watching us, if you're watching us, if you're listening to us to, on audio, shoot us an email, realshame at gmail.com. We also answer viewer questions like this on air that are sent to us to our email address. So you can leave a comment below or send it to us. Excuse me. Oh, to that email address, realshame at gmail.com. We're on social media at realshame on Instagram. Like, subscribe, share the show, do all that kind of stuff because it really does help. And stay tuned next week as we cross some movies off of your list of shame. And we'll see you soon, guys. Have a good one. Bye.